Hello there you beautiful people. Now in the last few lectures you've been doing so much stuff with files, okay? You've been able, you've learned how to create them, move them around, copy them, delete them, paste them, rename them, um, search for them and so much more, okay? All from the command line. But even though we can now manipulate files on a grand level, we haven't really seen how to take a quick peek at what's inside them and manipulate their contents yet. Well, that's what these next few videos are for. Over the next few videos, you're going to be learning five new commands that will allow you to manipulate file contents. Um, so this is stuff such as reading files, reversing files, and even sticking files together, as well as reading them in some paging programs. So what this is going to allow you to do is to get most of your work done from the command line without ever having to need to open up external uh, editors, which is going to be a massive productivity boost, and it's going to help you keep you inside the whole um, command line work process ecosystem. So this is going to be very, very useful. It's kind of like a missing piece um, at the minute. And after it all, after the end of the next few videos, you're going to be able to perform a whole bunch of useful functions on the contents of files, which when combined with what you know about manipulating files in their entirety is going to make you, you know, the file manipulation master. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so the first command that we're going to take a look at is the cat command. Now, do you remember those kitten jokes that I was talking to you about earlier? Well, meow. <laughs> so now you've actually seen the cat command before, um, so this will be a rather nice refresher. Okay, so you can see here on our desktop, we've got uh, a few files. We've got file 1, file 2, file 3, file 4, and file 5.txt. So let's take a look at what's inside the first file, but instead of opening it, we're going to look in our uh, terminal to see what's inside the file. Okay, so if we type cat and then file, oh, I need to be on the desktop, don't I? So let me change to the desktop. I clear the screen and then type cat and file1.txt. Okay, and when I press enter, we'll see that the contents of the file have been written to standard output. And we can see that the file contains the word hello. Now, if I press, uh, if I, you know, double click that and open that graphically, we can see that yes, all that file contains is the word hello. Okay, so using the cat command, we managed to get that, um, the contents of the file printed to standard output. Okay, so let's try and see what's in file number two. Okay, so if we do cat file2.txt, we can see the word there is inside. Hmm, I guess, you, I guess you can imagine where this is going, right? So if I go file three, it says you. If I see file four, it says beautiful. And I bet we can all guess what's in file number five. <laughs> so if I press five, it says people. Okay, so if you put all the five files together, it says Hello there, you beautiful people. Well, what a coincidence. I wonder how that happened. <laughs> so, in fact, you can actually use the cat command to stick files together, okay? And that's actually usually what it's for. Cat is short for the word concatenate, which is a fancy word for stick together, okay? So what cat does is stick together all of the input files and then pass that, that stick together stuff to standard output, okay? So if we do, if I clear the screen, if we do cat file1.txt, file2.txt, file3.txt, file4.txt, and file5.txt, and press enter, you can see that hello there you beautiful people has been uh, made by sticking together the five different files and then that has been printed to our standard output. But we can of course redirect this to a new file called beautiful.txt on our desktop, which we see has been created here, and when we open that, we now see that we've got a new file that says, hello there, you beautiful people, um, that has been created by sticking together five other files. Now, we can actually see, you can see this command line here is quite long, right? Well, we can actually simplify that using our knowledge of wildcards. So instead of having cat file1.txt, file2.txt, file3.txt, file4.txt, and file5.txt, you can just use a wildcard like this. Cat together files one to five.txt into uh, beautiful. So if I if I delete beautiful.txt and run that wildcard, and it's been created again, and we can see here that yep, we get exactly the same result. Hello there, you beautiful people, but a lot less typing. So that's pretty cool, right? Now the cat command, when you want to stick files together like this, it's useful for sticking together text files, obviously, but it can be very useful when working with audio or MP3 files, for example. So if you could have multiple different single MP3 files, uh, you know, different songs, for example, but you can actually concatenate them together, stick these different files together to create one long file that has all the music in it. So that's pretty epic.
So the cat command is used to stick files together or actually if you want just read the contents of a file so we could just do cat um, beautiful.txt so cat beautiful.txt and we can see the contents of any of any file which is really really useful but another command that I want to take a look at is the tac command so let me just um, uh, clear the screen here so the tac command is just cat spelled backwards and it's used to reverse whatever it receives as an input so if we make a file called alpha.txt by echoing let's say abc to alpha.txt um, and we're going to also echo def to alpha and notice the way that we've got two arrows here because we're going to append to the same file rather than overwrite it okay uh, so now if I look in alpha.txt we've got abc on one line and def on another okay so if we read the file if we read the file using cat we do cat alpha.txt we get abc then def Okay, but let's see what happens if we read it using tac. So instead of cat, we read it using tac, which is the cat spelled backwards. And you see now that we get def, then abc. So you can see that the tac command actually reads the whole file in reverse, but leaves the file uh, the lines the same. So it just wrote the last line first, and then the first line last, right? But it didn't affect any text on each line. So if we stick together um, the various different f files here, the file 1 to 5, um, using cat, so if we do file 1 uh, to 5.txt, you see that we get the output there. But now I want you to think what might happen if we pipe that into tac. Okay? Now tac will reverse the file um, line-wise, so the last line will be printed first, and the first line will be printed last so what do you think might come out of this just take a couple of seconds have a think about it so what might happen is the last line um, which is people would come first and the first line would come last so what might come out is people beautiful you there hello okay so let's have a look there we go, yeah. People, beautiful, you, there, hello. So think of the tac command as reversing a file vertically, okay? So it just flips it upside down. It doesn't affect any of the lines, it just flips it upside down. And of course, because this is all being printed to standard output, you can, um, of course, redirect it into another file called reversed.txt. And here we are, here's reversed.txt. When we open that, we see that we've saved the output in that file. So that one good thing about the tac command where it can be used is again if we take the example of mp3 files I don't know if you've ever seen those videos online where people say oh look what this song says when it's played backwards and like you know they, they try to say it's got some hidden messages in the file maybe you've seen those kind of videos well maybe they were made using the tac command because if you run an mp3 file through um, through the tac commands if I did something like tac uh, my file dot mp3 and save that into another my reversed file .mp3, um, then this file, this one here, will um, be the same song but played backwards. Okay, so that's something to to potentially give a go if 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 you would like. Okay, so that's the tac command. The tac command will reverse files vertically. There's one other that I want to look at, which is called the rev command. So the rev command allows you to reverse the content on each line. So if I clear the screen. Okay, and we cat together the various different uh, files. Again, we get hello there, you beautiful people. But if I pipe that into the rev command, okay, look what happens here. It's still saying, if you can read it, it still says hello there, you beautiful people. So the lines are vertically the same, but horizontally they've been reversed. So the last letter of each line, so here's the O, has is now become the first letter. And, you know, it, it's reversed them along the lines but the order of each line is the same if that makes sense if we if we put the 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 tac command you can see that people is the first line whereas here people is the last line but the letters have been reversed okay so this is the way you can think of rev and tac tac reverses a file vertically and rev reverses a file horizontally okay now you can really jumble up files by piping it through both of them so if i pipe it through tac it's going to reverse vertically, um, but then if I pipe that also through rev, you've now got a vertically reversed and horizontally reversed 
um, file, which is a good way of jumbling up stuff if you ever find that particularly useful. But yeah, just to make it easier, just think of TAC as reversing files uh, vertically in columns, and you can think of REV as reversing files horizontally across the rows. So all of these commands, whether it be cat or it be tac or it be, you know, rev, all they're doing is they are taking a file, uh, reading it into standard input, doing some processing, and then, you know, just um, spitting that the, the output to standard output. Okay, so they're a good way, well, cat is a good way of reading files, and, you know, the others are a good way of jumbling up stuff. But the problem is when you read files to the terminal, like this, um, if a file is particularly long, it can really just clog up your screen, and it's not very useful, and you find yourself scrolling a long, long way. So if we try to find a file um, that's quite large, so if we say, for example, um, let's use the find command, Let's search our system up to, let's say, a maximum depth of four. We don't need to go too far. Uh, for any configuration file, so a name that ends in .conf, um, and a size that, let's say, over 20 kilobytes. Okay, so here we are. We only get we only get two really, um, but there's one here in called cupsbrowsed.conf, and this is to do with like printing services, and it's apparently a it's a la rather large file. So if I copy it, copy that and try, try to uh, cat it out, okay, so if I try to cat that out, oops, you see, you see it just happened right there, if I try to cat that out and press enter, you see that we've just shot down um, a stupid amount of lines, can you see now, and if I wanted to have a look at it, I am ended up scrolling all the way through here, it's not very good, right? Um, so that, that's a problem when you're dealing with stuff on the command line. And we want a more elegant solution to dealing with relatively large files. And sometimes, you know, if I if I just wanted to read out a file, maybe I don't want all of the file. Maybe I only want a certain snippet of it. Maybe I only want the top 10 lines or the bottom 10 lines or something like that. And we need to have a, a better way of being able to deal with file contents on the command line. So in summary, so that's what we're going to be covering in the next video. But in summary of this video, we've seen that the cat command can be used to actually read out files, so if I look at beautiful on our desktop, if I read out uh, beautiful.txt, we can read that out. If we want to reverse files um, vertically, we can use tac. If we want to reverse files horizontally, we can use rev. Um, but all, either way, all of these, uh, what they're doing is they are just reading a file's content and spitting it out to standard output where you can then, of course, pipe it into other commands to do other processing, okay? Or, like, you know, while you're working on the command line, if you just want to see quickly what's in a file, you can just um, you can just use cat com the cat command and then see that uh, really quickly and get on with what you were doing, okay? So, there we are. Those, those are the cat, tac, and rev commands, but in the next video, we're going to take a look at how you can level up this ability to do more sophisticated things. So, I'll break the video here and see you in the next video.